the valiant Lionesses of England advanced to their third straight semi-final after defeating a tenacious Colombian team 2-1 in a gruelling 90-minute match. Alessia Russo scored the Lionesses' second goal, putting them ahead of Colombia's Perez in the quarter-final match after they had rallied from a goal behind. Just before the first half ended, England, who had been under intense pressure following their opponent's goal, managed to score a scrappy equaliser to tie the score at one. In the fight to go to the semi-finals, Colombia destroyed supporters' hopes to take the lead against the Lionesses in the waning seconds of the first half, and it happened after England was jeered by the opposition crowd during their quarter-final encounter on Saturday. However, England persevered to maintain their advantage in the second half, and they will now play Australia at home in the semi-finals in an effort to reach the World Cup final for the first time. Fans of the Lionesses cheered their man as Wigman led her team to victory in 90 minutes, helping them to keep their dream alive. After the win, England players were spotted comforting and exchanging jerseys with some of the distraught young Colombians. The Prince and Princess of Wales thanked the Lionesses for their historic victory and wished them luck in the semi-finals in a tweet. Well done to at the rate Lionesses for their valiant victory. In anticipation of the Sarina Wiegmann's Lionesses against England World Cup quarter-final match, Enthusiastic England fans assembled at Stadium Australia in Sydney waving flags and donning red and white face paint. With an early rush at England's goal, the Colombian squad made a rapid start to the game. The Lionesses were met with booing and jeers by Colombian supporters, something German players had previously said was a contributing factor in their last 16 defeat of the team. Alessia Russo came agonisingly near to scoring in the first minutes, but their progress was halted when a Colombian injury necessitated an immediate substitute. Carolina Arias appeared crushed as she sobbed in agony and sadness while watching from the sidelines. The Lionesses seized early command of the game while maintaining their composure and coming off as much more assured than they did in their last 16 match. However, Colombia, a team famed for its tremendous aggressiveness, demonstrated its fondness for hard tackles against the Lionesses early on, sending Millie Bright and Rachel Daly to the ground with powerful strikes, leaving Wigman looking less than delighted. The game's opening corner was superbly taken by England, but Daly was denied an early lead in the 26th minute by a spectacular stop. Despite many Colombian breaks keeping the threat alive, the Lionesses maintained their possession advantage during the first half, and their defence held up well. However, as England's adversaries put more people in the area, they started to appear more and more threatening, until a brilliant goal gave them the lead. In the 43rd minute, a curving shot was narrowly saved by custodian Mary Earps, but the squad rose to the challenge and came back with an impressive display of pressure. However, a fantastic effort by the Lionesses led to a wave of persistent pressure that ended with a goal by Lauren Hemp, levelling the score and rekindling the team's optimism for advancement. When Colombian custodian Catalina Perez botched a dive, she profited by letting go of the ball and allowing the midfielder to score. 
After the break, England came out confidently and continued to put pressure on the Colombian players. Colombia was making every effort to annoy England, but they were powerless to reverse the team's dominance of possession. Georgia Stanway executed a free kick excellently in the 58th minute but Perez was just in time to deflate English supporters' dreams of a second. The Colombian custodian had minor medical care, but she quickly recovered and was able to continue the game. It didn't take long for England to exert pressure, as star striker Alessia Russo scored another goal. However, their joy was slightly tempered when 20-year-old Natalia Giraldo was given the opportunity to compete on the international arena after Colombian goalie Perez exited the game due to an injury as a second substitution for the team. The Colombian team did not give up easily and came back to exert some steady pressure on the England team. In the 70th minute, Mary Earps once again came to the Lionesses rescue with an outstanding save that kept them ahead. After star player Chloe Kelly took over for Russo in minute 84, England played deep in their own half for the majority of the next 90 minutes in an effort to defend their lead. England continued to play conservatively for the last eight minutes of extra time as nervous fans worldwide counted down the seconds. Colombia was unable to capitalise on any opportunities, and England supporters cheered when the game was over. Before the match, Supporters stood with St George's flags in front of Sydney's iconic Opera House in anticipation of the Lionesses' match against a team ranked more than 20 places lower than them. The Lionesses are among the favourites to win the competition in Australia, which would build on their triumph at Euro 2022 last year. Due to Lauren James to match suspension for stamping on Michelle Alizé's back, England will be missing their star player of the tournament today. England needed penalties to defeat Nigeria in the last 16. Fans from the UK, Australia, and other countries anticipated that Sarina Wiegmann's winning formula would enable England to advance in their pursuit of the most prestigious women's football trophy. After a string of defeats before the start of their World Cup campaign, England was considered the favourite to win today, but their performances have thus far lacked their customary cutting edge. Ella Toon has replaced James in the starting lineup, marking Wigman's lone alteration. In less than 90 minutes, Captain Millie Bright's squad defeated Colombia more easily than Nigeria. Lauren James contributed two goals and three assists in their 6 1 victory over China, demonstrating their potential form but their Monday performance against Nigeria was cautious and defensive. A painful penalty shootout that required 20 shots to resolve earlier on Saturday saw hosts Australia defeat France after a score of 0-2-0 at the end of extra time. By defeating Germany 2-1 at Wembley last summer to win the European Championship for the first time, the Lionesses created history. Now, Wigman's squad is focused on dominating the entire planet. The Lionesses manager stated that England has a strategy to face Colombia without their leading scorer Lauren James, who has three goals and three assists in four games. She is still a member of the team, of course, Wigman said to BBC Radio 5 Live.
James has everyone's support. She aired in a single second, costing herself two games, and immediately regretted it. It's close to the end of the game, she's worn out and inexperienced, and stuff like that sometimes happens and that's part of life, two games constitute the punishment. Now she needs our assistance and the chance to learn from it. She can't play on Saturday, but she is still a member of our team. Her team has said that Wigman knows the realities of being a female athlete in a manner that her foremothers didn't. This week, Wigman was questioned about what it meant to her to be the only female coach left in these finals, but she remained evasive. I'm not now preoccupied with my travels. I'm working hard with my staff, she retorted. Colombia has shown they are capable of an upset by defeating Germany 2-1 in the group stages, despite England being placed 21 places higher than Colombia. After playing 120 minutes against Nigeria and surviving extra time with 10 players due to James' red card, England will be looking to make Colombia's task easier. On Saturday, anxious yet ecstatic supporters flocked around England to support the Lionesses in their World Cup quarter-final triumph. Fans in St Albans, Hertfordshire, disregarded the summer rain to watch the big screen as manager Sarina Wiegmann's squad faced Columbia at Sydney's Stadium Australia. Chants of come on England could be heard. Even though England's top players had a string of injuries leading up to the tournament and their leading scorer Lauren James, 21, was dismissed in the earlier that week's last 16 penalty shootout triumph against Nigeria, football enthusiast Joe Anaking predicted that the best is yet to come for England. The 31-year-old sales advisor from Oxford said, I think we have been playing OK. Inesti Albans at the McDonald's big screen. To be honest, the last game was a little bit nerve-wracking. I won't lie to you. I think they can do it, I said. Though she isn't forcing us to play poorly, Sarina doesn't seem to be getting the best out of us right now. The tournament's joint hosts defeated France in dramatic fashion on penalties in Brisbane earlier on Saturday, setting up a matchup between the winner of England vs. Colombia and Australia in the round of eight. I know that I would have liked Australia over France, Ms. King said. The Matildas, in my opinion, are excellent. There is a vibe, and it is better than sitting at home, so it is fantastic to be here with everyone who is supporting at the same time. After winning the European Championship the previous year, England entered the competition as one of the favourites. Bella Oglethorpe, 16, went with her father Chris to watch the game in their hometown on a huge screen and expressed her desire to see England play Australia in the semi-final. Although Australia does have the benefit of playing in front of their own fans, she characterised England's World Cup performance thus far as mixed, adding, if we make it to the semi-finals I feel we have a good chance. I think Colombia is a very physical team, and England struggled against Nigeria because of that. Hopefully they have learned from that, the author says. Bella definitely wanted to attend, her father said. It is wonderful to experience the ambience while watching it on large screens. Since the Euros last year, Women's football has really grown in popularity and recognition.